everybody. I am back in the shop doing some actual woodworking for my camper build. I spent some time on this very hot day uh, just cleaning some crap up here. There was a this back corner of the shop kind of collects some stuff. Still got to get rid of some of this stuff from there. And then I also emptied a bunch of stuff out of the camper itself. A couple more things to go. This wood can mostly stay. I'm going to be processing this momentarily. Stuff can stay for now. Ah, uh, yeah, I just found this whole pile of crap and that crap over there. <laughs> I always had to move it out of the way anytime we wanted to work on it. So a lot of days you'd be like, oh, I don't feel like emptying it. Or there's already, you know, this is a production shop. So there are actual work items in here. Can't just have my crap in the way constantly. So yeah, I have some work to do on the interior ceiling panels. That will probably be tomorrow. Today I'm getting all the trim pieces prepared, or most of the trim pieces prepared for the exterior. And I'm gonna start with the under wings and under the cab and the front first. So that is what I'm gonna be doing at the table saw right now. Is the trim piece for all the major corners for the under wings I got a mill of a bit more stock it's about an inch and a quarter by a little, about a quarter inch thick it's actually a little tiny bit over so I'm gonna mill up enough for all of the under wings and then under the cab area I've got to mill all these strips down to 1 8 of an inch they're for furring out my rafters a little bit more room for my insulation and uh, also some construction adhesive on both sides. So those will be going on. These are actually my interior ceiling panels. We're seeing how my roof is going to look. It's going to be built up thicker than this. Probably half an inch plus uh, some trim. I've got some nails here i got to pound down or snip off. And then this, I've got to punch my nails down. It's a little bit proud. The piece was twisted. I ended up being a little bit fat here anyway. Uh, so I've got to hand plane that little chunk off. Probably just from there to there. It's starting to get thick. So tomorrow, I'm probably going to put my interior panels, which are outside right now, uh, on the inside. So hopefully I'll get this, these furring strips on today and tomorrow I'll get these interior ceiling panels on. So I'm going to pull these off of here right now so I have some extra light, move a couple things, uh, rip these strips and then get back priming. So you see me here about to make a cut and I decide to grab a mag magnetic feather board, 
people in the dust collector there. So that will keep my pieces tight against the fence. And I'm just pushing them in until they're a little over halfway and then carefully lifting them straight up and then flipping them over end for end with the same side against the fence and pushing it through to finish the cut. And that way I'd never have to pass over the blade even with a push stick. And my hands are pretty much always behind that magnetic feather board you see sitting there. And for furring strips, the results were good enough. They were satisfactory. So I'm not recommending anyone do this necessarily. I'm just showing how I did it. This isn't really a how-to channel. It's a how I'm making my camper channel. So please read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools. Take some extra training, do some extra learning, make sure you're safe at all times. All right, so after this little session of cutting, I uh, put these furring strips on my camper. It's still a tiny bit. Okay, I'm just going to clean up these shavings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clean up these shavings, uh, then we're going to back prime, not these, uh, the under cab molding and uh, under wing molding. And when that's done, we're going to put these, uh, well, that's drying. Uh, I'm going to put these four inch strips on the inside of my rafters. So I've got a first coat on my uh, primed moldings. Well, that dries, although it's probably pretty dry. 
uh, I'm gonna put on these furring strips on my rafters. So I laid them out here so I can just lay a little bead of yellow glue. Then I'm just gonna tack them onto my rafters with three quarter inch brad nails. Just a few for until the glue sets. And also once my uh, interior ceiling panels go on, they'll be faster as going straight through again. Okay, so I got the furring strips on the back section here. Just gotta do it up here in the cab over. It's kind of awkward working up here. I'm <laughs> actually not looking forward to uh, a few tasks that will be coming up in the future. Sorry, I squeezed my Um Yeah, you can't quite sit up in here. It'll be fine once it's an actual bed, but there's quite a bit of work. It's gonna be a little bit cramped. Anyway, so yeah, I gotta get the rest of these strips on. And then I'm gonna give my molding another coat. I think I have to dig out the molding for the front here. This, uh, this and both of the underwings are going on first before the sides and the front. So I'm waiting for my primer to dry. I just filled in a, or <laughs> filled in a few framing pieces. Uh, for my paneling to land on, as well as that piece at the top under the arch. So I've got my furring strips on all the rafters. My insulation is square styrofoam. Uh, by the time I got the paneling on, I think it was going to be a little bit tight, especially with some glue in there. And I didn't want the styrofoam to create little flat spots and make it like a faceted curve. So anyway, I just want myself a little bit more room. So I've got some really flexible plywood here. It actually came as a cover sheet from a lift of plywood. And I think it's actually the interior plies of some plywood. So it looks like it wasn't glued properly and came apart. Anyway, it's really flexible. So I'm going to use it to strap my rafters while I put my interior ceiling panels on, which will lock all the rafters in place. So I won't have to put in any blocking in. And if I put the interior in first, it will strengthen it for when I put my roof panels on because they're marine grade, quarter inch plywood, and they're quite a bit stiffer. I did a test, they do bend, but it was, it was putting some downward pressure on these. So if I get my interior arch first, I should shore it all up. I'm also gonna use this piece to measure. Actually, I can take all this stuff out of here. lower these. I put these on to help keep straighten the walls while I did this process, but I'll have to lower them down. Uh, I'm going to use this piece to measure my interior panels. So instead of messing around with the whole sheet, I can just use a little strip to get my length. So that is what is going to be happening next. So I just strapped the roof to prevent side to side movement while I put my interior ceiling panels on, which I'm just setting up to cut. So in this session, I'm at the panel saw. I'm trimming up the pieces for my interior ceiling panels. It's five millimeter underlay plywood. It's a little bit flexible and is a little bit wavy. So I'd use a piece of wood here and there to hold it down, try to engage the scoring blade as much as possible. It's kind of annoying, a little bit awkward looking. In the end, we got it done. That's what's really important.
But here I am putting my interior ceiling panels on, or one of them. Uh, I put polyurethane construction adhesive on the rafters, stop short of where this panel ends. And when I put on the next panel, I'll put more glue on the next set of rafters. And there are just a ton of staples to put in. These staples are inch and a half. Or actually, I think, no, these were inch and a quarters. Sorry. And uh, they're actually held together, the row of staples, by glue. And when you shoot them, the friction heats it up. And it actually glues itself into the wood. They're, they're really strong, actually. So I might add some screws, but probably not. As you'll see, there are a lot of staples. Probably every five or six inches I put one. And I just made sure to press it tight to the rafters. Like I said before, this plywood was kind of wavy. There was a couple little trouble spots. Uh, you know, I put that jack there in that one spot to help push that. So yeah, I'd shoot them, go outside and look, and I'd make sure it was all seat seated nice and tight. I did have one problem area up in the front cab where I wasn't paying attention and had to do a little, do a little persuasion. But they ended up, ended up turning out pretty good. And now you can just watch me put in about 200 staples. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.